What is machine learning? Hello, my name is Richard Kirshner. I'm with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Today we're covering what is machine learning. What's in it for you? We're going to cover the basics of machine learning. What is machine learning? Artificial intelligence versus machine learning versus deep learning. How does machine learning work? Types of machine learning, machine learning prerequisites, applications of machine learning. Here we have our, um, it looks a little bit like Frankenstein, our Frankenstein looking robot. Today, let me tell you what is machine learning. Machine learning works on the development of computer programs that can access data and use it to automatically learn and improve from experience. Watch a robot builder construct a house in two days. This was back in July 29th, 2016, so that's pretty impressive. This amount of time to continue to grow in its development. And it's smart enough to leave spaces in the brickwork for wiring and plumbing and can even cut and shape bricks to size. Amazon Echo relies on machine learning. And with more data, it becomes more accurate. Play your favorite music, order pizza from Domino's, voice control your home, request rides from Uber. Have you ever wondered the difference between AI, machine learning, and deep learning? Artificial intelligence, a technique which enables machines to mimic human behavior. This is really important because this is how we are able to gauge how well our computations or what we're working on works is the fact that we're mimicking human behavior. We're using this to replace human work and make it more efficient and make it more streamlined and more accurate. And so the center of artificial intelligence is the big picture of all of this put together. IBM Deep Blue Chess, electronic game characters. Those are just a couple examples of artificial intelligence. Machine learning, a technique which uses statistical methods enabling machines to learn from their past data. So this means if you have your input from last time and you have your answer, you use that to help prove the next guess it makes for the correct answer. IBM Watson, Google search algorithm, email spam filters, these are all part of machine learning. And then deep learning, which is a subset of machine learning, composing algorithms that allow a model to train itself and perform tasks. AlphaGo, natural speech recognition. These are a couple examples. Deep learning is associated with tools like neural networks where it's kind of a black box. As it learns, it changes all these things that are, as a human, we'd have a very hard time tracking. And it's able to come up with an answer from that. Now, let's see how machine learning works. First, we start with training the data. Once we've trained the data, the train, we go into the machine learning algorithm, which then puts the data into a processing which then goes down to machine, another machine learning algorithm. And then we take new data, because you have to test whatever you did and make sure it works correctly, and we put that into the same algorithm. Once we do that, we check our prediction, we check our results, and from the prediction, if we've set aside some training data and we find out it didn't do a good job predicting it, and it gets a thumbs down, as you see, then we go back to the beginning and we retrain the algorithm. And a lot of times, it's not just about getting the wrong answer. It's about continually trying to get a better answer. So you'll see the first time, you might be like, oh, this is not the answer I want, depending on what domain you're working in, whether it's medical, economical, business, stocks, whatever. You try out your model, and if it's not giving you a good answer, you retrain it. If you think you can get a better answer, you retrain it. And you keep doing that until you get the best answer you can. Let's see the types of machine learning. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning. There's a number of ways to divide up machine learning and how it works. These are two main categories you can divide it into. Supervised learning, we have a known amount of data. So in this case, we have a bunch of apples. We have a machine learning algorithm. It goes through the process. It goes through and trains a model based on that known data. And then once you've trained your model on the known stuff, you can then put an unknown data in there and you get a new response. And of course, in this particular one, it's an apple. So it's trying to figure out whether it's an apple or another fruit. There are many different algorithms you can use for computing this information, for doing this supervised training. Just to list the, some of the top ones that are currently being used, and by no means, not there's more than just this. So by no means, this isn't the complete list. There's polynomial regression. There's a random forest. There's linear regression. There's logistic regression. There's decision trees, there's k-nearest neighbors, and there's naive bays. Like I said, this is just a short list of some of the many tools that are out there nowadays. And if you have supervised learning, then we should also look at unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning. So we have unknown data. In this case, you can see we have a bunch of fruit. 
And we might not have labeled it. We don't know. We've never had anybody look at it and say, this is what this is. And we take that data and we put it through the machine learning algorithm. And then that goes through the processing and then the trained model. And what the trained model says, hey, can I see a pattern here? And from that pattern, it divides it up into a response. In this case, apples and pears. You can see some of these things look just like the other. And it tries to put them all together so that you get similar things in similar groups. And again, we have a nice list of algorithms here. And this is not uh, the only algorithms used for this. So don't limit yourself to this. just these. These are just some of the primary ones used today. And of course, we have the k-means clustering, singular value decomposition, fuzzy means, partial least squares, a priori, hierarchical clustering, principal component analysis. Machine learning prerequisites. Computer science, fundamentals, and programming. So any of the machine learning out today, you have to know some basic scripting or programming. Intermediate statistical knowledge. You have to understand a little bit about probabilities. If A is current, how likely is B going to happen? If there's clouds overhead, how likely is it going to rain? Linear algebra and intermediate calculus. The linear algebra is very important because you have to understand basically drawing a line through the data points and what that means. That's the most fundamental linear regression models. You draw a line through all your data and you use that line to compute new values. Intermediate calculus means you need to have a little bit of understanding of what a differential equation is. You really don't need to be an expert because the computer does all the heavy lifting for you, but it's important to know the terms when they come up, unless you're doing some advanced programming on the actual models themselves. And data wrangling and cleaning. I would say this might be the biggest one in here is you have to start getting a grip on how to clean up your data. There's a saying is bad data in, bad data out. Good data in, you're more likely to have good data out. Some applications of machine learning. Instance segmentation. Object detection. Instant segmentation. You can see here where they use machine learning to go in there and find where the different cats are and the different objects are in the picture. And then in segmentation, it actually cuts them out. Kind of a fun one, especially if you have a Google Pixel phone and you can do little animation objects on top of your uh, ongoing pictures you're taking or movies. Number plate detection. You can see here where we have a car and it comes in there and it finds a number plate on the car. Once it's done that, it can then do automatic translation. Automatic translation is we pick up some symbols, in this case on a machine, and it does machine translation so that you can know what it's saying, even if you don't speak that language. So to summary, we covered the basics of machine learning. What is machine learning? We talked a little bit about the process or the workflow of machine learning. We've looked at two different divisions of machine learning, supervised and unsupervised. We went over the prerequisites you should have going into machine learning. Then you should have the basic fundamentals or a little bit of computer science and programming or scripting skills. You should know some basic linear algebra and maybe some little bit of calculus and differential equations as part of the calculus. You should have some basic intermediate statistical knowledge of what that means and what those terminology means. And you should have an idea of what data wrangling and cleaning is. How do you take your data coming in, making sure you don't have missing values, make sure that you're switching float values so they're processed correctly, integer values, versus something that's categorically like yes, true, yes, no, true, false. And then we looked at a couple applications of machine learning. Of course, there are so many applications out in today's market. It's one of the biggest growing markets out there. This is just a very brief summary of some of the things that are going on. Again, thank you for joining us today. For more information, visit www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. And if you have any questions on any of this material or like more information, you can either post a response down below the video or feel free to visit www.simplylearn.com. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.